George Duran is a retired science yeah. teacher, and he volunteered to talk to my English learners about macroinvertebrates. Certain macros can only live in good water quality, all right? And the first important one, what is this? Hey, look at this. Are what do we call that? What are they called? Mayflies. Okay? I mean tails. Three tails. Stoneflies. Now, they're not, you know, they look scary because this is big, but they're, you know, most, most stoneflies are only about that big, okay? So they're not going to bite you. They don't have any mouth parts, okay? Um, how many tails? Two. Two. So most people get these, they can't remember. So the way you remember, the mayfly has three tails, stonefly has two tails, because they look real similar when you just see them uh, swimming around, is M has three, three things going up and down, okay? Yes? Um, do they like start changing and they start changing? Do they start changing? Yeah, they will, and it's called metamorphosis. What they do is they spend their time living in the creek around the rocks, and then pretty soon, as they've under, got bigger and bigger and bigger, it's time to turn into an adult. And we call that metamorphosis. Well, these macros do this underwater. They have a cocoon, just like a butterfly, but a butterfly is on land. Butterflies aren't macros. And they build a cocoon and they turn into the adult, okay, underwater. This is not the adult bug. This is what we call, it's the immature. Bug. Now there's a name for that. It's called larvae. Okay? Larva. That just means it's the stage of a life cycle of a bug. It's going to turn into an adult. Okay? And that's why it looks funny. Now most of the macros you're going to collect are like this. They're the larvae form of insects. So they're not the adult. This bug turns into the adult in water. Well, wings don't do you any good in water. So what will happen is they'll float to the surface of wherever creek they live in or pond or lake and they'll sit there on the surface and dry their wings because they're wet. They can't fly with, with wet wings so they dry their wings okay? and it might take 20-30 minutes if it's a nice warm day. What things come up from the water to eat all of these mayflies sitting fish. up there fish and a lot of times you see a lot of fish when a when there's a mayfly hatch as it's called when they run to this they float to the surface a lot of times you see a lot of fish feeding on them because they sit there they, they can't move they dry their wings they then they fly around looking for a mate a species of mayfly adult only lives two days as an adult. Imagine your life if you only live two days. Be pretty short, huh? Well, one species only lives two days, finds another partner, the opposite sex. They got two days to do this. They mate and the female lays their eggs on the surface of the creek. And they float down to the surface, attached to the rocks. They hatch as a larva. And they might, they live most of their life as a, a sub-adult or a larva. After George Duran's presentation, I took students to Bear Creek Park where they collected macroinvertebrates. It was unforgettable learning that helped them use English in an academic setting, forging cognitive development with language acquisition. It also boosted their scientific knowledge in terms of life science. I'll never forget my first look at a mayfly under magnification. The abdomen had feathery structures I recognized immediately as gills. Well, to my knowledge at that time, only fish had gills. I had wondered how these insects could stay underwater without coming up to breathe. Now I had my answer. Well, there's nothing like teaching to learn more about the world. Speaking of learning more, let's see how much of the following video you understand. It's about the same subject macroinvertebrates. Looking at Bear Creek in Medford, it's easy to believe there's nothing living in there. But these young people think otherwise. They're stirring up the rocks on the creek bottom and catching whatever they stir up in these nets. There are two basic techniques for a collection like this. 
using your feet to agitate the rocks or moving the rocks with your hands and then catching what comes out with the net. Either way, the dip net will usually catch macro invertebrates, animals to be sure, but aquatic animals. They're small, but large enough to be seen without a microscope. Macro invertebrates include larva stage of insects. At that stage, they can get oxygen directly from the water. Here's the larva stage of a caddisfly, and these are aquatic earthworms. Macroinvertebrates are identified according to physical traits. Magnifiers like these help people see details. Some macroinvertebrates, like caddisflies, are intolerant of pollution, so their presence indicates good water quality. All macroinvertebrates supply food to salmon at certain points in their life cycle. These kids learn about this at an event called Latino Kids and Bugs.